If you've been finding my tutorials helpful and appreciate my teaching style, I'm very excited to announce that I have my first downloadable course for Studio One titled Studio One 5.5 Fundamentals. There's over six hours of content covering everything you need to know to get started with Studio One and to begin capturing, editing, and arranging your ideas. We start from the ground up and cover the start page and setting up your audio device and MIDI interface. We then take a look at the song page, recording audio and MIDI, the edit tools, mix console, included VSTs, working with effects, and much, much more. There are 16 different sections to the course, as you can see laid out here, and instead of spending only five minutes on recording audio, for instance, or four minutes on recording MIDI, I actually go into depth on these topics and the various other topics covered in this course, and explain things in a way that is palatable for both beginner and intermediate users for Studio One, as well as those who may be migrating to Studio One from a different DAW. So if you're interested in having a video course that covers everything you'd like to know and is accessible right from your hard drive with no need to worry about searching around online to find the topics that you'd like to learn about, this course will suit you well. To wrap up, while many of you are already familiar with my style of teaching, the rest of this video will be a brief sample taken from the downloadable course just to provide a quick sample of the included content for the course. Links to purchase the course will be provided in the description and comment sections of this video. Thanks for your support, guys. Automation within Studio One is super simple to get done and record. And you also have a lot of creative tools to come up with really rich and complex sounds at the same time. So we're gonna start off with the most simplest way to record your automation. And on this first track here, I have a Mai Tai loaded. Now I haven't done anything with the Mai Tai except for uh, loading a preset. And that's about it. I recorded a simple melody here. And that's everything that I've done to this track. And what we're gonna do is automate the filter cutoff on the Mai Tai. So I do have the Atom controller and that is pre-mapped to Mai Tai. And I'm gonna use the controller to automate the cutoff filter, but don't worry, we're gonna take a look at a third party VST and see how you can go about mapping your external controller to the parameters on third party VSTs and then adding automation to that. So let's go ahead and let's just play this back really quickly and then I'll go ahead and add the automation. Okay, so I kind of wanted to open up that filter on these longer notes here. So the only thing that we need to do is just come back to the beginning, enter into record, and I'm going to open up the Mai Tai. And all we need to do is turn the knob, and that is it. Okay, and that's all you need to do to record your automation. If you notice here, this now has a little empty circle in the center, letting us know that this parameter does have automation on it. But let's close the Mai Tai, and I just wanna mention, we do have automation control up at the top here, but that's gonna be for track automation. What we're working with now is part automation. So in Studio One, we have part automation, which is going to be contained within our part here, and hopefully you can see this little line here that represents the automation that was recorded. Now we also have track automation, and we're gonna take a look at that in just a moment. So now if I double click on this MIDI part to open up the editor, editor in our part automation lane down at the bottom, we can see that cutoff, this was not there before I recorded it, but when you record the automation in the manner in which I just did, you have this Parameter added to your part automation lane and we can see the automation that was recorded. Let's press W to zoom out a bit. Okay, so we can see all of that here. 
Now, when we record in real time the automation to a parameter, it's going to be added here. But if there is a parameter that we'd like to add manually and then draw in our automation, we have that option as well. So what we could do is right click on a tab and then we have add or we can click on the ellipsis here to the left. And that will open up the automation panel and then we can choose another parameter. Let's see. Let's come to the filter. Let's try out the resonance. I'll double click on that. You can see it's added to the parameter list here on the left. Click close. And we can see now we have a tab for that. And then at this point, I can come in while the arrow tool is active and add points where I'd like. Just notice that this is snapping to our grid. And that is because snap is turned on and it's set to 16th notes. So these points are going to be added on 16th note values. If you'd prefer to really precisely or freely place them, turn your snap off. And you can see now I can freely place this wherever I'd like. If I turn the snap back on and change the quantized value to say quarter note, then you see we're going to add points at the quarter note setting. So now that we have these points added, I could just select click hold on a point and drag that up. And when you hover in between the two automation points, you get this white circle. And with this, you can add bends or curves, automation curves. So now we've manually added automation to our resonance. And we can see that represented in our MIDI part up above. Again, hoping that that shows up in the video. Let's close out the editor and open up our Mai Tai. And let's play this back with the automation added and take note, as I mentioned with, with, with the cutoff, you see the circle here in our resonance knob, we now have a circle here letting us know that automation is contained for this parameter. So let's play back. So it's a really super simple process to record your automation live within Studio One. And at any time, as we just saw, you can double click on the MIDI part and then come to the part automation lane and make your adjustments. We can double click on a point to remove it out. We can hold Control and A to select all of our points and then press Delete on the keyboard to remove. If we'd like to remove an automation parameter, we can right click on it and then just click on remove. So that is automation that we record live and is contained within our MIDI part. Let's close out the edit, edit window. And I just want to mention that we do have the automation tracks available. And if we open up the Mai Tai again and come back to that resonance, if I were to right click on this and choose edit automation, notice here our track changes the view to automation. And we now have an automation track for our resonance, which is going to be different than when it's contained within our part. This is actually going to be a separate track outside of our MIDI part. So once we chose to edit our track column switches to an automation view, if we'd like to add points to the curve, we can see resonance is here. And as soon as I add points, we switch to read mode. Let's come back to the Mai Tai. And that's what I was saying before. If you're going to be working with part automation, this can remain off. But as soon as you uh, add an automation track, this needs to be active in order to read the information. If you want to record live on an automation track, you need to arm this for touch or latch. So now as I add points, actually let's double click to remove that. I can click hold and move this up. This functions the same as what we saw in the part automation lane. Again, if I come hover between two automation points, we have that circle and I can add a curve automation curve here and one there. Let's add a point here and here. Click hold and pull this up, add a curve. 
Now we are not stuck with this automation view that we're seeing right now. So if we'd prefer to see the MIDI track as it was before, we can click on this automation uh, show button here, or we can press A on the QWERTY keyboard, and then we return to the MIDI view. But if we'd like to see our automation track at the same time, we can come to the bottom left corner of the My Tie and click on that button there. And here's that automation track that was added and the automation that we put in manually. We can also auto adjust the automation mode here for read, touch, latch, or write. And this display here is gonna show the current value wherever the song is playing back. So if I switch to the beginning of bar five, notice the percentage is gonna to change to represent what that automation is doing for our resonance at this point here. So let's open up our Mai Tai and play this back. Okay, so sonically, this is gonna work the exact same way as if we recorded it to our MIDI part. And when we record to the MIDI part, it's contained within that part, so whenever you move the part, it will obviously follow along with it. Now, we do have a setting within our options menu to be sure that our track automation follows along with the instrument that it's assigned to as well. And I believe that's on by default. So if I were to, if I wanted to move this MIDI part to a different area of our arrangement and I click hold and drag that, then you'll notice that our automation follows along with it. So uh, that will make it easy for you to work with arranging your song. And if we come to Studio One Options and we would like Advanced Automation, we can see here Automation Follows Events, that's checked. If I deselect that and apply, click OK. And then when I move that, this automation does not follow along with our event, but I, I'm not sure why you would not want that behavior. So if you are having an issue where it's not following, just be sure that you come and check this box here, apply, okay, and now we're good to go. Now we have a few cool tools that we could work with when adding or editing our automation. And just one thing to note, if I come to 